Chapter 10, we have our first time skip, 10 years later. This is Sereno, which is where there's anti-republic sentiment and radical separate movements. And it is a hub of Mercultism. And now this is Zana, she's 19 now. And now she's a attract- she's an attractive young woman, woman who is who wrapped herself in insignificance. She knows his second glances and keeps w- walking and tries to ha- and she notes that over the last decade, Bane has mainly been covered by the Orbalus. Only his feet, hands, and face are free of infestation. Because he's wearing special gloves and boots at all times. And also, he also has a special helmet that assembles a cage. Meant to keep the parasite from growing over his face. He rarely leaves their camp in Ambria, and now Xana has her, his eyes and ears to the outside world. And he has to oversee the, and coordinate his intricate plans. He is, she is waiting for a young tri- Twi'lek known as Keladin. And he's a political revolutionary that he, she is in a relationship with. They, and he remembers some of her studies that they left order on eight days before Ven started with quite another vessel from Nimun Merchant. He has to give her training and gives her many words that are part of the training. Her first task is to get one of the uh, meeks to follow her. She can't just hit a trap. She has to bring one of free will. She has to tame one. So every day she sits and meditates to get one to close. One, and she keeps moving to set the bar. She walks with one after taming it and, and is about to com- and tells uh, Bane about it. She is about to pet it, but Bane reaches out with a force and snaps its neck. She realizes that it was another lesson that she cannot be emotionally attached. Then he, then she cuts out and hears that uh, Keladin calls her out. She uses like the name Reyna, which is a meme of, which is like a mix of Zana and Rain. He meets. Zana gets mad at him for calling her out, and and she knows that Kiel is a child position and privilege. He admires him long enough, but she's like, I don't like to be kept waiting. He's like, I shouldn't be doing this, and they keep walking anyways. Darth, it cuts to Darth Bane on Andrea, and he's moving on, moving with pain because of because of the Orbalist. He is trying to make a cis holocron, but fails every time. He tried five years ago, but still failed. He has to try and transcribe the things, but he doesn't know how to craft it. He has to like look at every historical account and can, seeks out many places until he learns the purpose. He tries to make an. He tried to, again two years ago, but still failed. Now he has to realize he's futile is futile and tries a fourth time again. He will not fail again and use time. He he keeps drawing out the force it, and he could not do much to make Tremor pass. He is trying to assert uh, control with convulsing digits and he screams in agony. He stands empty pedestal, feeling some rage over the orbalisks, and he surrenders himself to the fury. Time for chapter eleven. Time for chapter eleven. He eyes Xana with suspicion, and Kale re- tells Pak that he is, she is with him. She Kale tells him that she works at the embassy, and that he gets mad because only Hedden can lead that stuff. But he is in charge of the mission. He, he, they argue with each other, but he, he, it, but then Xana observes everyone. They are revolutionaries, but they are well funded because of rich people like Kale, and they were exceptions. She feels disdain for all of their backgrounds, and she knows they're just overgrown children. She still has some thing- feelings about Kale, but that's only because her master is so cold, and that K- Bane is barely any human. She finds all the traits that she needs in Kale. But they gather in the room, and they reveal their intended scheme t- to a romantic dare. They're gonna kidnap minor local officials and hold them for ransom. Santa's like, bro, no. They should try something else and strike during the of celebrations. And they should do. She says that she could make the tar- take notice. They should target Chancellor Verlorum because he still is part of the diplomatic embassy, and he has a secret meeting that they are going to fight out. Zana explains that she was the one who revealed this, and it's a lie. And then she cuts to one of her mysterious underground contacts, which is a Mun, which uh they worked to like get information secretly through money because because of Lord Cordis's wealth. They are going to trade soul and purchase it. They have to spend the credits and never had many con- direct contact. She is a middleman. The moon is good and their business is done. They walk and make their slowly up to the weighing ship. He's being Santa's mad because she- she- he left her- him live, but he only knows as much as he needed to.
So, and he remembers that he, or, he a story where he went to Caleb and forced her to help him because by using his daughter. He cuts back to now and says that he will have guards and Xana counters that only his personal security will be there. And he has to keep it secret. They, they need more time to repair, but he, Caleb says they can do it all there. They all have to do it. And this is a more subtle and serious approach after a while using the force. He, they will have to stick. They argue over the plan, but they will still do the new plan that Xana has put into their minds. He, they head back home and Xana kisses him goodbye and goes to sleep. Later, she rolls out of bed and begins to pack her things to return to Ambria. He, she returns back to Ambria and sees everything's destroyed because he failed to make another holocron. Then she sees Bane meditating on his failure, but tries to be more chill about and says that her plan has gone through. And then she she is mad because they will not succeed. They, she said they need to be a distraction and blind eyes of the Jedi Council because they are now part of the Senate. And she says, why do we always fail? We can help them succeed without risking exposure. He says the Republic keeps the Jedi in check, so they must keep it like this. And then he says that one day they will reign supreme, but they have to be ready. Bane is like, you have never questioned your missions before, but never didn't want to tell him about Kale. She had no reason to doubt the wisdom and says that she's never lose your control of your power like this about the Orbalisks. She plants the seed of how they could drive him mad, but she apologizes. They have she has to clean up the camp and then get more supplies later. She she has to challenge him one day, but she has to she has to defeat him by getting him to rid his Orbalisk coat. Time for chapter twelve. Okay, we're back to chapter twelve. Twelve to see an older Joe Hoon. He is with the the cha chancellor who is now in his sixties. He is now taller and more of a man. The, he is a very modest man, and, and he is he is okay with the chancellor still. But he but he never agreed to a personal guard detail, so Johan has to keep accompanying him, even even though he's a Jedi advisor. But he never really advises him on much. He sees many of his power and realizes he is great at reunifying everyone. And now they're about to land. He he accompanied over 50 personal missions, and it's an important world to the Republic of Sereno. There are many ruling families who fund anti-Republic factions, but they have to get them to not fund them anymore. They have to go on officially so they can like make sure the rulers actually agree to help them out. They t they touch down on the private spirit of Count Noju, head of the one of the Serrano Six Great Houses, and an ally of the Republic. They disembark, and he notices how the Chancellor has a nice suit. But, but he, that he paid for himself. They, they see how symbolic it is there, and there's no fanfare or attention. There's only a few people waiting to talk to them. And as they land down, they, they have to keep walking out. The man keeps walking, but then he says something is about to happen. They see four figures waiting, and they have to fight. And the new dawn crumbles down. It, the Chancellor dangles for a second, but Johan heaves them up with one hand. And he has to reveal that the situation has to fight them all. He is it shows that he is a he is a star he uses the form of form Neman is mostly diplomatic so he doesn't fight too much. He keeps fight, fighting them and then he fights the Twilight from earlier and but it hurts to fight him but he he keeps at it and this is basically like the whole fight. And like he's about he sends him down to the ground with the force, but he thought he was dead, but actually he's still alive. Because the force had saved him. Jordan just tells him that he has to hire himself a kiffing security team at the end. Chapter 13 is next.